I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, oh, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast. And I'm glad you could join us this week as we get into some geekiness. Ooh, I got some light and some shadows on my face there. Okay, let me move this light just a tad. Yes. Don't you love it how I'm doing it right in the middle of the show? Therefore, my, I won't have as much shadow on my face. You know, I need all the help I can get. What can I say? Anyway, we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network. Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon. By the way, we are the Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon Show, which is also known as D-R-B-I-L-L dot C-C, which I would put right there. CC, of course, stands for Computer Curmudgeon. You say, what is a Computer Curmudgeon? Well, hmm. Uh, an older, opinionated dude that knows computers like the back of his hand. What's that? Oh, never mind. Anyway, <laughs> the point is that I'm here to help you with your techiness. Not tackiness. No. Techiness. <laughs> or geekiness. I don't like nerd so much. Nerd. Nerd is the word, you know? <laughs> I don't know. I am digressing so badly. Anyway, the point is... You're there to watch tech. And this is tech. Matter of fact, this is very geeky what I'm about to share. This is first item. A geeky tip. A graphical kill command for Fedora Linux. Now here's the thing. Most of you know that I have switched over to Linux for my PC client at work. I support Red Hat Linux. There's the Red Hat logo there. See, there's the shadow again. Sorry. Anyway, I feel like the moon being obscured by the, or the sun or the earth. I don't know, something. An eclipse! I'll try not to do that. Anyway, the point is I support Red Hat at work. And so Fedora is their client version instead of their server version, which is what I work with at work. So I'm using Fedora for my client. And I have on the blog the perfect, the way to build the perfect Fedora client for moi. Your mileage may vary. But in the process, I found that I needed something that I had on my Ubuntu machine that I had built. And that is the ability when something kind of hangs, you know, particularly Java programs that just kind of go, eh. Well, you want to be able to kill that. Dead. And so you can go and you can kind of muck around at the command line. But I want to do it graphically. I want to be able to just drag cursor over it and go, boom blow it away so that it is no longer a nuisance. Don't you hate nuisances, sisters? Anyway, so here's what you do. You install xorg-x11-apps by going sudo yum install xorg-x11-apps. This command here. Then you go to system settings, click on your name. I've got to fix that. It says on you name. I'll fix it to where it says your name. Eesh, mistyped. Anyway, click on your name in the upper right hand corner. Hover over and click on system settings. Select keyboard, then shortcuts, then custom shortcuts. Hit the plus in the right hand side of the panel to add a custom keyboard shortcut. For name, enter X kill. For command, enter X kill and click apply. Hover over uh, the disabled at the end of the line, the little bar there, on the right hand panel of your new shortcut and click a combination. Now I used Control F12. That seemed nicely available. 
And then, when you have an offending program that gives you a hard time, you just hit Control F12, hover your mouse over it and go click, and it goes Which is actually nicely satisfying, I must say. So there you go. Next item, Windows 8 Preview Video. This is a video on YouTube talking about the Windows 8 Preview. Now, I have downloaded the Windows 8 Preview. <laughs> and let me give you a tip. If you download the installable executable file, or the MSI, whichever one it is, I don't even remember, and you run it on an existing computer, <laughs> It's going to try to install it on that computer. Don't do that. No. Look down the page as far as you can and find the little tiny fine print where it says ISO file. Then once you get the ISO, you can use that to build a Windows 8 test box as a virtual machine. Now, maybe next week, all things being equal, I may try to actually show you step by step how to set up a Windows 8 test instance under VirtualBox. K? Okay. K. Okay. I was going to do it this week, but I ran out of time. It's been a long day today. I'm actually doing the netcast late on a Saturday, after 6 o'clock, as a matter of fact. Maybe that's why there's so many shadow issues. But I'll tell you why shortly. Anyway, it has to do... Let me just go ahead and tell you now, because I just feel like it. It all started a long time ago in a land far away. Not really. I'm just making all that up. Last week, I mentioned that I was bandwidth constrained. I wasn't even able to use my, my trusty tablet because I was uploading files and I upload mega files. So it had choked my network and I got tired of it. And I was grumping and grouching and curmudgeoning about how I need more bandwidth. <laughs> well, guess what? This past week at work, I was working with a Varro. Varro, of course, is our vendor of choice for doing geeky things at work. And I was working with the Varro engineer, Jeremy Waltrip. And Jeremy was telling me about a new service from Time Warner. Now, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, Dr. Bill, you ranted and raved about Time Warner before. Yeah. But he told me about this new service called... Are you ready? Wideband. I guess you figure if you've got broadband, that even broader would be wideband. <laughs> Go figure. Yeah, you know, these marketing guys, they'll come up with something. Anyway, wideband. Here's what it is. Are you ready for this? 50 meg down and 5 meg up. 5. 5 whole meg. Not K. No. I had 740 or 50K. And like I said last week on a good day, usually wasn't that fast. This is 5 meg, which would be 5 times 1024 as opposed to 740. See what I mean? It's like seven or eight times faster. Dude! Don't count on my math being right. Just saying. Anyway, they came out today. And they were supposed to be here at 7.30 in the morning. Eh, they were running late. I didn't care. It was okay. I'm getting more bandwidth. But then they got here and found out. <laughs> Don't you know? There was all kinds of problems. They actually had to run a new cable all the way from the road all the way down here because the old cable was so kind of crudded up and wasn't good. And when you got wideband, dude, you need a good cable. Know what I'm saying? Yes. So the guy worked all day long. Bless his heart. He did a good job. He worked and worked and worked until he got it just right. And he got me set up. Yes. He got me set up and he got me to where I have <laughs> 52 meg down and 5.05 .05 up. <laughs> I am practically insane with the power. <laughs> yes. You say, Dr. Bill, how much did that cost you? Well... 
They let me tell you a secret. Are you ready? If you call up Time Warner and ask for wideband, first of all, don't do it. No, go to their website. Go to the website because the website is what I went to and it has a special offer of $79.99 a month. Now I know that sounds like a lot of money and it is, but it's much more expensive. It's $99.99 if you call them on the phone. But they have the web special is $79.99 and that's what I got it for. $79.99 for one year. Whew. Now, that's like 20 some dollars more then I was paying for, well, let me, let, me, let me back up just a step. I was paying North State $39.95 for 20 down and 740K up. But they just sent me an email, or not an email, but a regular mail, piece of mail that said they were raising the rate to $59.99. Yes. Because it's costing the money to lay the fiber optic that I was talking about last week, probably particularly since they're digging with shovels. Dude, just run a ditch witch. Anyway, so it was only $20 more. Well, $20 more a month is worth it for the lack of, you know, being stopped from networking and using your tablet and doing your program and stuff. So there you go. So I told you the whole story. And the guy, like I said, he worked all day really hard. I mean, literally, he just left a few minutes ago. We just got done with all that. Whew. But I now have, dude, a rear-end kicking internet connection. <laughs> yes. Okay. Next item. Well, it was a long time to get to that next item, wasn't it? Before I even do that, let me tell you about our wonderful sponsor, Go to meeting with HD faces. See the little bit.ly thing there? Go to that bit.ly address. I left it up on the screen longer this time so you'll be able to write it down. Go to meeting with HD faces means that you can use your HD webcam to talk to people all across the world through the interwebs. Yes. And you can do meetings and you can, you can exchange ideas and you can plan and you can put up screens and they can share information and it's just awesome. And if you sign up through this bit.ly URL, you will get a 30 day free trial. You should do it. It's awesome. Great deal. I'm into great deals. I just got a great deal on this wide band service, dude. <laughs> okay. Next item. Password one is the most common business password. Yeah. That is capital P, A-S-S-W-O-R-D, and the number one. This meets the enterprise security requirement of Microsoft Active Directory, Directory complexity by having a capital letter, a number, and a change of case. But it's not a very good password. People can guess this since it's the most used password, folks. Isn't anybody, doesn't anybody care about security anymore? I do. I got like certifications of all kinds out the wazoo. I don't even know what the wazoo is, but it's going out of it. <laughs> I got a, I am a CIW, secure, certified security analyst. I'm also an EC council certified security analyst. I know about security. I'm a certified security dude. And this one, password one just doesn't cut it. You know what I'm saying? You gotta do better. I'm saying you just really, people, come on. Anyway, next item. There will be nine flavors of Windows 8. Nine? Here's the list. Windows 8 starter for you noobs. Windows 8 home basic. Windows 8 Home Premium, which is what, of course, most PCs will come with. Windows 8 Professional. Windows 8 Professional Plus. I wonder what the plus is. Windows 8 Enterprise. Star Trek? No. <sighs> Talking about business. Business. Uh, Windows 8 Enterprise Eval. 
you're not quite sure whether you're going to use it in your business. Windows 8 Ultimate. Whatever. Windows 8 ARM Edition for ARM processors. So there you go. How's that? That's interesting. And I gotta admit, the preview, if you click on the YouTube preview that's on the blog and watch it, I'm I'm more interested now. Like I said, I'm gonna test it with a with a uh, virtual box, virtual machine, and then I'll let you know how it comes out, and I'll actually show you how it all works next week. I hope. I hope I get to do that. I, I may run out of time. I'll be out of town all next week in training in Atlanta for VMware View and ThinApp. Looking forward to it. Me and three other guys from work are going down there. <laughs> Gonna geek out, dude, I'm telling you. Okay, now, whoa! <laughs> yes, Geek Software of the Week, but this week, Geek Software of the Week is a Linux Geek Software of the Week. This is Squirrel SQL. Squirrel! <laughs> Couldn't resist. Squirrel SQL Client. It is a Java-based SQL client for Linux. Now, remember a while ago I said if you had a Java program that locked up, you could use that trick to get rid of it? Well, it's not this program that locked up on me. It was actually the UCS console from Cisco. We were building the Yvaro guy and me and Bruce, another guy at work, we were all building UCS systems for VMware. And my session, which is a Java app, got hung. And that's why I did the fix. So it wasn't Squirrel SQL. But Squirrel SQL does cool stuff. You can view and edit data in any JB, JDBC compliant database. You can view the database's metadata. You can work with multiple databases on both local and remote machines. You can use single consistent interface to work with different database engines. Yes, many, many things. So it's good stuff and it's open source and that means it's free. Dude. <laughs> now, a while ago, I told you about how I've got this new wideband connection and I'm enjoying it and I'm geeking out on it. But because I was so constrained with my other network, I got suspicious and I wanted to know, is my ISP, my former ISP, okay, were they throttling me? Because see, this is an issue that's come up with a lot of ISPs. They throttle your Connection until it gets slow. <laughs> I'm just talented, what can I say? Anyway, <laughs> you can be throttled <laughs> on your internet. Here's what they do. The evil corporate minions watch your internet usage. This is a wavy line, by the way. <laughs> as, you, as you use your internet, the little wavy line goes up and down. But then you start uploading big monster files. Like I do. And what happens? Your little wavy line goes way up. And so the ISP goes, alert, alert, wonk, wonk, wonk. He's using all of his internet. That's a no-no. So they start throttling you down which punishes you. It's like a little kid sticking his hand toward the cookie jar and you slap the little kid's hand and he draws it back and goes <laughs> Well, I'm the same way. <laughs> you interfere with my internet upload and I go <laughs> I do, really. And so I was pondering this and then I saw something on a netcast somewhere that was talking, it was actually on Techzilla. It was Patrick Norton talking about how they were throttling his internet and that he tricked it. Now, here's the cool thing. If you set up an, a router, now he suggested OpenWRT, which is at openwrt.org. I'll put that right here. He used that to set up QOS, quality of service, 
standards on his own internal router that basically he throttled his own connection so that if he started approaching the like 80% usage level, it stopped him from going any higher. That way his ISP didn't see a tremendous usage and didn't throttle him down even lower than what he was supposed to get. Which is cool. I mean getting 80% of all of your bandwidth is better than getting like 1% that they're doing to punish, punish you. Hard to say. So, you can test to find out if you're being throttled. You should know if you're being throttled. And if you are, you can do that. Perhaps before too long, I will do a demo of how to set up OpenWRT, which is at OpenWRT.com, as I mentioned, and show you how to do the anti-throttling, personal throttling trick. Yes. In the meantime, something you can research. And this will tell you how to test yourself to see if you are being throttled. <laughs> that just sounds terrible. Okay, next item. NASA was hacked 13 times in the past year. Whoa. Now, your space agency, you would think would be smart, techy, and on top of security. But they weren't, apparently. They got hacked 13 times. I had a friend of mine at work. He was saying, dude, that probably means they got all of our satellite secrets and we're being spied on by enemy Chinese dudes that are watching us through the satellite networks. He's quite a character. <laughs> he also wears a tin hat. Yes. Which, of course, will protect him from the space aliens. Just saying. Okay, whoa! Another Geek Software of the Week. Yes, this Geek Software of the Week is a Windows Geek Software of the Week. But this Windows Geek Software of the Week is for Linux. What? You say, what, Dr. Bill? How can that be? It's a program written for Windows that allows you to see the latest distribution version ISO how specific is that? Of over a hundred different Linux distributions. Which means you can download the latest, greatest, coolest one. And it's cool and graphical. It'll show you a desktop of the version. And it'll show you the name and the logo if they have one. And a little write-up on it. And you can do all kinds of cool stuff. And it's free and it's open source. It's awesome. I actually haven't downloaded it and installed it yet. But I saw it recommended on Hack 5 Tips. And I'm really excited about it because I want to get it, you know, set up on my PC, which is right there in front of me here. And that way I can keep up with all the latest, greatest distros. By the way, distro is a phrase, title, name that means Linux distributions. It's just easier to say distro, isn't it? So anyway, this software will let you do that. You know, my beard is kind of all all over the place. But that's okay, you don't care. I just happened to notice looking into the camera screen there. So, <laughs> I don't know why I mention these things. Anyway, the point is, we're just about out of time. And remember, <laughs> until next time, that the doctor is out of here. <laughs>